Do you want to learn how you can test your serverless projects without having to deploy them online? In this video, we'll learn about serverless offline and how it's a tool we can use to do exactly that. Hi guys, my name is Sam with Complete Coding and in this video, we're going to be learning about serverless offline. Serverless offline is a plugin that can be used with a serverless project to allow it to run locally on your machine. It emulates a lot of the functionality of serverless, specifically around API gateways and lambdas. We can then extend this functionality by using serverless DynamoDB, which can allow us to mock Dynamo databases as well as the APIs, producing a full system running on our local machine. Now that we are in the code, we can set up this project so that we can run it offline. This allows us to test it much more easily on our own machines without having to deploy it up to our AWS accounts and possibly affect other people who are also working in the development environment. To do this, it is really simple if we are just using APIs and lambdas. We can do that by adding a new plugin called serverless-offline and we can save this file and then we need to install serverless offline by running npm install. We're gonna be saving this as a dependency, but saving it as a dev dependency, pasting in serverless offline, and waiting for this to install. Once this has installed, we can now run SLS offline start, hit enter, and this will spin up a local version of serverless. If I increase the size of my terminal, you can see that all of the endpoints are created. And if you have lambdas that don't interact with Dynamo or S3 and are simply getting data from that lambda and returning it, then this is all you would need to do to test it. You could then head to HTTP localhost 3000 in Postman, add on the URL and any other parameters, and your APIs would work. For us though, we're gonna add one more thing. We're gonna add in DynamoDB local. So what we need to do first is kill this instance, move our terminal back down, and then add some more configuration to our serverless YAML file. The first thing that we need to do is we need to add in some more plugins. One more plugin to be specific, which is the serverless-dynamodb local, dash local plugin. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this and also install it using npm. Whilst that is installing, we can set up a bit of the configuration that is needed for serverless local with DynamoDB. If we go down to our custom object, we can define Dynamo DB, which is gonna have a set of configuration so that we can run it offline. When we run our serverless offline, we only want it to run with DynamoDB when we are on the dev branch. So we can say the stages that this is allowed to run on is just dev. As well as that, we need to define how we want it to start. Inside this start parameter, we need to define the port, which by default should be 8,000, but you can change that if you need to. 
as we want it to run on our own machine, we need to be running in memory. This means it is using the RAM on your machine to act like a DynamoDB table. So we're setting that to true. When you first start up Dynamo, it needs to know about the tables that you are creating. To do this, we need to provide a migration file and that is something that we definitely want to be doing. So we need to set migrate to be equal to true. To run this migration, we need to find and provide some migration files. And in here, we need to find the directory which they can find our JSON descriptions of our DynamoDB tables. We're going to be putting it in offline slash migrations, and we can copy that text. This is all of the configuration that we need to do in serverless. So we can save this file, and now we can create the migration file. In the base of our project, I'm gonna create a new folder call it offline slash migrations and in here create a new file and call it player score dot json. Inside the player score json object we need to have a table with a capital T which is again another object and in this object, we need to find a table name. And this table name needs to be identical to the table that we are mocking out. So if we go into serverless YAML, we can copy the player points table name from here and paste it in just like that. As well as that, we also need to have a key schema. And that also needs a capital K. This is an array of attributes. What I'm actually going to do is move the serverless YAML file onto one side and scroll down to our Dynamo DB table where we can see we have a key schema. In this key schema, we have one object with an attribute name. And the attribute name in this case is ID. As well as that, we also have an uh, key type. So copy key type is hash and add, turn these into strings. And now we have the key schema defined. As well as the key schema, we need to define the attribute definitions. And again, this is an array of objects. Inside this, we need to get the attribute name again. And that again is ID. And an attribute type, which is going to be unsurprisingly, capital S, as it is in our definition here. The last thing that we need to define that we haven't defined in our original DynamoDB definition is a provisioned throughput. This is because the local variant of DynamoDB doesn't understand having a paper request billing mode. So we need to define a read and write capacity, which I am going to copy in just here. So as we have a read and write capacity, we can just set those to one for now. 
This is because we are unlikely to need to make more than one request a second. And when we deploy it, we're going to be using paper request, which will remove the performance limits that these capacity units may apply to us if we were using them in production. Now we can save that. We have the definition for the player points table. This is us almost done, but the last thing we need to do is change some code inside common and inside Dynamo so that we are using the local variant when we are running offline. At the moment, document client is always just a base document client, but we can actually pass in some options. So if we're running any other environment, we have to define some options. And for now, there aren't any options that we're going to be passing in. If though we're running offline, we have a process environment variable. So process dot env, which is an environment variable. And we have that of is underscore offline, which will be set to true if we're running using the serverless offline plugin. In that case, we can change the options slightly. So in our case, we want the options to set a region and that region is going to be localhost and the endpoint is going to be a string of HTTP colon forward slash forward slash local host colon 8000. Now, some of you might have realized that 8000 is the same as the port number that we defined our DynamoDB instance to run on locally. And that's exactly what it is. These options are telling the document client that we want to be accessing our local version of Dynamo. Now all we need to do is pass these options into the document client configurator so that we are now using the local version whenever we are running offline. If we now save this file, head down into our terminal, there is one last thing that we need to do. We've run npm install on the serverless DynamoDB local, but we also need to install the Dynamo package. To do that, we run sls dynamodb install, and this will actually pull down a configuration code and some utilities required to run Dynamo locally in memory. As you can see, this is getting dumped into the .dynamodb folder and it will complete downloading just in a sec. Whilst that's downloading, we also need to install the Java development kit. This allows the DynamoDB package to work properly. The link for this page is in the description below. And in here, we can scroll down to find the different packages whether you're using Debian and Linux or Mac, or even if you're doing this on Windows, install the SDK and that will allow us to carry on with the rest of this tutorial. We've now finished installing the DynamoDB package. So now we can run our serverless local. We can run this by running SLS offline start. But as we are using Webpack, we also need to pass in a location parameter of point so that it uses the base of the folder. When this runs, you'll notice that we already have some differences. At the top, we are saying that we have started DynamoDB locally on localhost 8000, and we've created a player points table using the 
score JSON. We still have all of our endpoints. So if we head over into Postman and do a get request to player score, we can see that currently this is failing to get by ID. This is because it is a brand new Dynamo table. So therefore there are no player scores in there. If we go into create player, I've set this up so it has the same ID, a name of Sam and a score of 43. If I hit send, we now get a 200 response with the new user. This has now stored a new user in our mock DynamoDB tables. If we go back into our get request and now make the same request, we get back the user as we would expect. If we head over to our code, we can actually see that we have all of the console logs from all of the endpoints that we ran. This means that it is much easier for us to debug code because we can see the logs in one place right next to the code. This can be used and you can build and test huge architectures. You can connect multiple different serverless projects and reference between them. And that is how we are able to reduce the amount of time spent waiting for deployments and make sure that when we do deploy even to a dev environment, we've given it a first look over to ensure that it is all working. In this video, we have learned about serverless offline. We've learned how it enables us to deploy local host versions of our serverless template so that we can test that all of the endpoints work. We then took that one step further by adding in the serverless DynamoDB plugin. This allowed us to actually mock out the full scope of these endpoints from API Gateway through Lambda and to DynamoDB. This is incredibly useful for allowing you to quickly and consistently update your code without having to wait for a deployment to happen every single time you want to test one little bit of your code. If you've liked this video and learned something new, make sure to hit that like button so that more developers just like yourselves get to see this video and learn about serverless offline. And if you yourself want to learn more about serverless, I have a playlist down here, but I also have my YouTube channel, which I wish you would subscribe to so that you can learn more about serverless as I release more videos. Thank you, and I'll see you again next time.